crowd. You got a lot of people standing outside. Would you like to let them take your place? They cannot get in. We want to thank your fire department, actually. They've been great. We got a lot of people out there. That's like a poll, right? That's like a poll. So I just want to say uh, a very special hello to New Hampshire. It's been a very important place for me. You remember 2016? We really had to come in here and win it, and we won it by 21 points. And uh, the rest was history. We just went up and down the East Coast through the Midwest. We went through, and it was a, a beautiful thing to see. And I think even if you look at 2020, we did better in 2020 than 2016. I think that right now, we have the highest level in, of enthusiasm that anybody's ever seen, ever, for a performance. And the reason, the reason is they are so bad. They are destroying our country. We have the worst president in the history of our country, and he's destroying. He is destroying our country. I just told a very a brilliant interviewer who might be right there. There he is, right there. Lawrence, come here for a second. Come here. Get over here. He just, he's, he gave me a killer interview. No, I just said that, I just said that the happiest person with Biden is Jimmy Carter, because Jimmy Carter, his administration was brilliant by comparison. <laughs> Before we begin, I'd like to take time to congratulate Ron DeSantis and, of course, a really terrific person who had gotten to know his wife, Casey, for having run a great campaign for president. He did. He ran a, a really good campaign, I will tell you. It's not easy. They think it's easy doing this stuff, right? It's not easy. But as you know, he left the campaign trail today at 3 p.m., and in so doing, he was very gracious, and he endorsed me, so I appreciate it. I appreciate that, and I also Look forward to working with Ron and everybody else to defeat Crooked Joe Biden. We will have to get him out. We have to get him out. He's put our country at great peril, at great peril. So I just want to thank Ron and uh, congratulate him on doing a very good job. It's a tough situation. It's a tough thing to do. I'm thrilled to be here in the home of the First in the nation primary. Do you know why you're first in the nation? Because of me. I kept you there, unlike Biden. I kept you there. First in the nation. That's right. And we're keeping you there. You know, the Democrats abandoned you. And they abandoned also a place, you know where else they abandoned, right? Huh? Iowa. And we did very well. Did we do well in Iowa? We, I think we're going to have the same. I think we're going to have the same kind of a result here as we did last week in Iowa. Iowa is great. They said, sir, it's a little bit cold tonight. I said, is it 40 below zero? They said, no, it's like about 10 degrees. I said, that's like warm. <laughs> no, Iowa is great and you're great. The whole country is great. You want to know the truth? They just need some help. Since 2016, you and I have been in this battle, side by side, taking on the corrupt system. And it's a corrupt system. It's so corrupt. Every element, practically, is corrupt. It's sad to see. And who would know? And who would have ever brought it to your attention? And it's important that we do bring it to your attention, because that way we can fix it. We're going to fix it. The Washington Swamp has done everything in its power to take away your voice. But this Tuesday, I believe the people of New Hampshire are going to speak loud and clear. Very loud. With your vote, you're going to send a message straight to crooked Joe Biden and his radical left thugs who weaponize the DOJ and the fake news media has to get in line also because they know exactly what's going on. Send them a signal that we are coming this November. That's why everybody has to get out. Don't believe the polls. Assume that we're down one instead of up 30 or whatever it was. We're up by a lot. But pretend you're down by one, and you go out, and you wake up your husband, and you say, Harry, we're going to vote. I can't do it. I don't feel good. I don't feel like... And just say, I don't care if you don't feel good or not. You're going to vote, Harry. You get him out there. 
Get your neighbors, get your family, get everybody. You got to vote because we have to win by big margins. We have to let them know this is a movement. You know, this is the greatest movement in the history of politics in this country. And maybe beyond. I love when they say that MAGA, you know, it's make America go. What do you think about uh, Biden? MAGA is a threat. You know what MAGA is? Make America. He wouldn't know. If I said, what's MAGA, Joe? He wouldn't know. It's make America great again. Make America great again, Joe. America first. It's America first. Two days from now, we're going to win New Hampshire, and then we're going to defeat crooked Joe Biden, and we are going to, in fact, make America great again. Your vote in this primary is your personal chance to score the ultimate victory over the liars, cheaters, and frauds trying to destroy America. So this Tuesday, January 23rd, Get every patriot, all of the patriots, the non-patriotic person, eh, if you can get them to vote, let them vote, too. Let them vote, too. But get every patriot, you know, and turn out, because we want to set records. We're going to set records. The weather's going to be okay, meaning like about 10 degrees. No, it's actually, the weather's going to be pretty good. All the information you need is at nh.donaldjtrump. Did you ever hear of him? Dot com. DonaldJTrump.com. As you know, here in New Hampshire, Nikki Haley has made an unholy alliance with rhinos, never Trumpers. Americans for no prosperity. Did you ever hear of Americans for no prosperity? I, I added the word no because that's essentially what they do. I was going to say Americas for China prosperity. But they're no good. They're no good. They're headed up by bad people. Globalists, radical left communists to get liberals and Biden supporters to vote for her and the Republican Party. Just see who's voting for Democrats are voting. What kind of a governor do you have in this state where they allow Democrats? Democrats, they've already got 5,000 signed up, but that's peanuts compared to the numbers we get. So. No, but they've already got, you had to be signed up by like October 7th. But think of it, Democrats to vote in the Republican primary. What kind of a governor would allow that? He is the most overrated governor, but not really, because most people don't think he's a very good governor, so he's not that. But you'll end, up, you'll end up getting rid of him pretty quick. The people behind Nikki are pro-amnesty. Do you like that? Pro-China, pro-open borders, pro-war, pro-deep state, and they're pro-Biden. Did you see where 50 percent of the people that voted for her in Iowa are going to vote? For Biden. In other words, they're Democrats. They're voting. They're voting. Think of it. They're going to vote for Biden. They just had no choice, so they picked her. This is not what we want. Our movement is pro borders, pro jobs, pro freedom, and 100% pro America. Pro America. We are the party, and I think this is so important. We are the party of common sense. You know, people say, oh, you're conservative. No, I don't care. It's like, doesn't matter. We are the party of common sense. We want borders. We want low taxes. We want a strong military. We want to drill, baby, drill. We want to drill, baby, drill and bring down energy costs. Because your state, New Hampshire, has the highest energy costs in the entire country. Do you know that? And I am going to bring your energy costs down by 50 percent within one year. It'll be easy to do. It'll be easy to do. And it's been that way for a long time. Never made sense. But that's another governor thing. This governor, you got to get him out of there. He's, he's a big Nicky guy, which makes sense. That made sense. When I heard that, you know, he ran for president, but he didn't run. He didn't have the guts to announce it. So he ran. He was trending around the Asa Hutchinson, you know? This guy ran. He was at zero for a year. Then he hit, two months ago, he hit 1%. I said, that was like breaking news. He hit 1%, but the following month, he was back to zero. Then he had one month where he was zero with an arrow pointing to the left, meaning he was less. <laughs> Guy ran for like a year. No, your governor wasn't much better. But in all fairness to Asa, your governor never had the guts to announce. He ran for president, but never announced because he didn't want to announce and have to take it back. So he just pretended like nothing happened. We're wise to him. The radical left Democrats are supporting Nikki for a very simple reason, because they know she's easy to beat. Uh, she, they came out with a poll two days ago. 
where she's way down to Biden and I'm way up on Biden. And that's the way it is. She's unelectable. Nikki Haley wants to change the working class. So th th just think of this. So you have a nice working class and they want to put a 23 percent national sales tax on everything that's purchased. Do you think that's good? How about forget about middle class? How about poor people? They have to pay 23 percent when they buy something. While she raises and she wants to do this, the Social Security retirement age by perhaps an extra 10 years because she's talking about a certain life cycle. So you can labor until the day you die and then not collect a penny out of your benefits that you really are entitled to. We're not going to play with your Social Security or we're not going to play with your Medicare. Remember that. You know, I know politicians well, because for my whole life, except for the last <laughs> little while, I had the greatest life going. I had the greatest. What the hell did I do? I got indicted more than Alphonse Capone. Can, no, can you believe it? Al Capone. If he had dinner with you, even these young ladies, it wouldn't, didn't matter to him. He was equal opportunity. If he had dinner with you, if he didn't like you, he'd kill you. You'd be dead. This guy got indicted less than me. Do you believe it? Because I say the election was rigged, let me tell you, and it was. And we have all the proof you need, too. If you're lucky enough to live past the retirement of age of 75, I guess they go by 75 under the Nikki Haley plan. She wants to gut Medicare using the Paul Ryan scheme. You know Paul Ryan, a rhino. Like the ultimate rhino, he's destroy he destroys everything. He goes on boards and the company Hasn't done so well since he's done that. But Paul Ryan used to be Speaker of the House. Not a good one. He led, he led the Democrat ads. You know, this was the ad, the granny off the cliff. They took his policy and they say, let's do an ad where we push granny off a cliff in a wheelchair. This was not a good ad for us. That was Paul Ryan. With your vote, it's campaign, and this is on Tuesday, you can declare that the Republican Party is never going back to the days of a weak establishment candidate. Candidates who preach cutting Medicare and Social Security. Security at home while they spend trillions and trillions of dollars on really dumb, endless wars. They never end. They go on for 22 years, 24 years. We don't do that, do we? And we defeated ISIS in four months, right? Remember, it was supposed to take four years? Four months. Because we have an incredible, we have an incredible military. Not the people that are on television from the military. Not the people that are missing for five days, Secretary of Defense. Not the people that are missing. And he's running the war. You know, a couple of days ago, he's, we have a new war going on in the Middle East. You see, we're dropping bombs all over the place again. You can do it with a telephone call and be much tougher, just if you know what you're doing. These guys are back into the war in the Middle East. Okay, it never ends, never ends. So we have a Secretary of Defense who's been missing, and now we find out he's been running the war from his laptop in a hospital bed. The laptop is on his stomach. I know exactly how it is. It's on his stomach, and he's running the war. This is not good because this is the same group that ran the horrible, most embarrassing moment in the country's history, Afghanistan, where we lost soldiers, should have never been lost. None of this stuff would have happened. You know, none of this, I got it down to a point where we could get it. We had to get out, it was good, but I would have never let Bagram, that's the Air Force Base, one hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons. It was so good for us, he left. You know who's occupying Bagram right now? China! They're occupying it. We lost soldiers. They, we left, we left what's called now, we left American hostages. Okay. He looks like a nice person. But we're never going back 
I miss that. You know, it doesn't happen very much. It used to happen all the time, right? These are misguided people. These are misguided people. We're never going back to the days of globalist rhinos who promised border security before the election. Remember that? Border security. We had the safest border in the history of our country, and now we have the most unsafe border in the history of the world. But they do the bidding for Wall Street. They want open borders after the election. You wait till you see what happens. We're going to win this election. We're going to have a great border. We're going to have more energy than you've ever had. And we're never going back. So if you want a losing candidate who puts America last, vote for Nikki Haley. But if you want a president who puts America first and did it successfully for four years, you know, I'm the only — did you ever read the stat that I'm the first president that didn't go into and start a war? I finished some wars, like with ISIS. And remember when I was running against uh, — and I don't use that nickname anymore because I gave it to Biden — Hillary. Beautiful, beautiful Hillary. Remember when — and she got up and she said, with his personality, we'll be starting wars. No, no. I finished wars. I took our people out. Surprising. And we won. With your support, we will soon be taking the oath of office on the steps of the United States Capitol. And we're going to have a whole — we're going to have a whole different country. As soon as I lift my hand from the Bible as your 47th president, I will seal the border, shut down the invasion of millions and millions of people coming into our country, and we will start an energy revolution. We have more than anybody else. We're going to resume that drilling. What they've done — what they've done — you know, look, look. What they've done to this country is not even believable, what they've done, especially when you look at the border. Things like Afghanistan, it was a surrender. That was a pure surrender. Horrible. I believe the lowest moment in the history. But what they've done to this country in so many ways, we're no longer respected. We have a man that can't put two sentences together, and he's negotiating with President Xi of China, with Putin. He's negotiating. The, our country is, has never been in this danger, I'll tell you right now. And I'm talking about World War III-type danger. We have never, ever had a situation like this. And the only reason the stock market's high, because they think we're going to win the election. That's the only reason, because that will, that will come crashing down if we don't. We will terminate every diversity, equity, and inclusion program across the entire federal government. And I will instruct the heads of ICE and Border Patrol to begin the largest deportation program in American history, because it's not sustainable. Three years ago, we had the most secure border in U.S. history. We built 561 miles of border wall. Remember with Mexico, they did so much. Remember? Mexico gave us 28,000 soldiers free of charge. I said, you must give them to us. They said, no. I said, you have to give them to us. They said, no. I said, you will. Don't worry about it. You will. They said, no, we're not. And then they sent their top negotiator, good negotiator, very handsome guy, nice guy, beautiful. It looked like Harry Grant. But I said, uh, we want 28,000 soldiers. He laughed at me. He said, oh, why would we do that? You're going to do it. I promise you, you're going to do it. No, we're not going to do it. Yes, you are. Then I said, also, we want catch and release in Mexico, not in the United States. You know, we have catch and release. Well, we release them into the United States, and nobody ever sees them again unless they murder somebody. So we catch and release. I said, I want it in Mexico. I want all of these things. I, I gave him a list of 10 things. Tom Homan gave me a list. Brandon Judd of Border Patrol. I took a list from the top 10 guys. I got every single one. They said, you'll never get it. A woman from the State Department said to me, sir, and she was very good, but she was a lousy negotiator. She said, sir, you'll never get this stuff. I'll get every one of them. I said, give me your top 10. I called it a top 10 list. And I went to Mexico, and they said uh, — they came in to see me, the top people. The president, I had a great relationship with him, actually. Great. That's why he didn't want to negotiate with me. He didn't want to keep it good. But, you know, uh, they came in to see me, the representatives, the one guy leading it, very highly respected guy. And I said, no, you're going to have to give us these 10 things. And they said uh, — he actually thought I was kidding. And the person from the State Department said, sir, we've been asking for these things for 25 years. We'd never get one of them. I said, you'll get all 10. I said, you're going to get all 10. And she smiled. 
Okay, so then it goes along, and I want soldiers, I want protection. This way, we had the safest border in the history of our country. And Mexico gave us thousands and thousands of soldiers. And they're not as politically correct as our soldiers have to be. Like, ma'am, please don't cross the border. No, their soldiers, Pancho Villa. You ever hear Pancho Villa with that thing and the bullets going across? They gave us the soldiers, and I said, no, we're going to do it. No, you're not. He said, here's what I'm doing. If you don't give us everything I want, I am signing a document. I had the document. I said, I'm signing it right now. It was Friday. I said, on Monday morning at 7 o'clock, everything that comes from Mexico into the United States is going to have a 25 percent tariff. And if you don't get it done within one month, it goes to 50 percent. Then it goes to 75, and then it goes to 100. And the same guy that said, I will never do this, sir, you have to be kidding. He thought I was kidding. I said, I'm not kidding. I don't kid, actually, you know? I don't kid. I said, uh, what are you going to do? He said, sir, uh, I'd like to take five minutes. Well, he took five minutes. He called the president of Mexico, came back in about two minutes. Sir, it would be our great honor to do every one of those things. It would be our great honor. It would be our great honor. So we have a policy, remain in Mexico. Now, how you know, you don't have to be a total genius. Remain in Mexico until you've added and everything. We had hundreds of thousands of people in Tijuana. This was not a lovely place at that point. This was not a good place to take the family for a little, for a little trip. It was rough stuff. But you know what? They weren't in our country, and we do it right. We had such a great system. If Biden, instead of going to the beach and destroying everything, if he went to the beach and did nothing, just slept, you know, he goes to the beach because one of his consultants thinks he looks good in a bathing suit, you know? <laughs> and he has a hard time with the feet in the sand. And he has a harder time lifting that. You know those chairs? They're like about eight ounces, right? They're made so that a child can lift them up for a grandfather to sleep in. And he can't lift it. But Secret Service did the job. They're great. Under Biden, the USA has been turned into a dumping ground and a disrespected one. We have, if you think about it, people coming in from all parts of the world, from parts unknown, speaking languages that people here have never even heard, and they're being dumped into our country. They're coming in from mental institutions. They're coming in from jails and prisons. They're terrorists, and they're coming in at levels that nobody's ever seen before. Do you know, I think the fake news will agree with this, in they had a, a post up about two weeks ago. They said, in, and I don't even believe this, it's too good to be true. In 2019, that's my, one of my years, they had no terrorists coming into our country. We had the terror ban. We had all the different things, right? We had no terrorists. It actually said 20, and you, you can go check it. You can check Deface the Nation on one of these shows. I think they put it up. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Donald Trump on Deface the Nation. Oh, they're bad news. They're all bad. All, they're all so bad. I don't even know why. Why do they, why? Why do they want to have an open border? Why do they want to have high interest rates, high taxes, a bad military? I, I mean, they are, I don't. So one thing, nobody's been able to explain why. Because again, you want to have borders. If you don't have borders and fair elections, you don't have a country. And we don't have borders and we don't have fair elections when you get right down to it. On day one, I will terminate every open border policy of crooked Joe Biden and the Biden administration. And to stop the deadly drugs that are poisoning our people, we are losing, in my opinion, 300,000, not 100, not 97. It's been 97 for years. It's 300,000, probably more than that. Right, Joe? I, I would say probably these are front row Joes over here. They follow me all over the place. I can't get rid of them. I can't get rid of them. Huh? These are all front row Joes. We, they're fantastic. They, I don't, you, must, you must have a lot of money, <laughs> no matter where I go. I say, it's front row Joes. You become, actually, though, you become quite famous, which is pretty cool, right? When you get right down. Thank you, everybody. Oh, North Carolina. We have North Carolina. We have a group of women. They've gone to 117 events, beautiful women, Married, I don't know if it could be successful, <laughs> because they literally, they've gone to 117 rallies. They were here last night. We had a big one in your arena. That was a great one, and this is a great one, except for the, all the people that have to stand outside. 
But I will deploy the U.S. Navy to impose a full fentanyl blockade on the waters of our region, because a lot of it comes in by ship. The drug cartels are waging war in America, and we will wage and destroy. We will wage war on the drug cartels. Uh, they're going to have — they don't want this. They don't want this. We did so well. We did so well with them, but now they make more money, probably, than almost anybody in our country. They're making more money than the richest people that you read about, including me. They make more money than anybody in this country — millions, billions and billions of dollars — because our leaders are stupid, okay? They allow them to make it. They drop people off. They say, walk across the river. They build platforms where they walk across the river. You've never seen anything like it. And it's like a, a well-oiled machine. And it just doesn't make sense. Who could want this? Who could allow this to happen to our beautiful country? And I'll use Title 42 as I did. We had Title 42 to end the child trafficking crisis by returning all trafficked children to their families in their home countries immediately. Nikki Haley, globalist, will never secure the border or stop the fentanyl that is killing thousands of New Hampshire citizens. And you know that. Nikki opposed my border wall. You know, she fought me on the border wall. I said, what the hell is that woman doing? She fought me on the border wall. We'll have to figure that one out. She condemned my strong border policy. She didn't want to have the strong — you know, there are a group of people that actually think open borders are okay. Those people, they're generally not very smart. <laughs> yeah, they're Democrat. They're definitely not Republicans. And then she stabbed the Republican Party in the back by siding with Barack Hussein Obama against the Trump travel ban. I have to be very careful when I say Obama's name because, you know, the fake news, they say, did you ever realize that he gets the name Barack Obama confused with Biden? You know, they're trying to say he's cognitively impaired. And when I use it, because I figure Barack Hussein Obama is probably running things based on some of the people I see. So when I say Barack Hussein Obama is running things, they say, oh, when I imitate him walking into a wall because he can't find the stairs, they showed me. Uh, true. They show me sometimes. I'll like, we'll have fun. We got to have fun. If we don't have a sense of humor with what's happening to our country, we're really, we're really screwed. So I'll show. They say, please, I'll show, you know, where you go. Huh. He makes a speech that lasts for about two seconds. He goes, huh. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. Something big is coming. You can probably feel it. Everybody can feel it. The next 12 months is going to be a wild time. Probably. You ever notice how short his speeches are? They last for about like two and a half minutes. You know why? Because it starts wearing off after a short period of time. He starts falling asleep. You know, I never talked about him this way until I got indicted. It's true. Once he indicted me, he did something that's never been done before. He indicted a very popular — look, I had tremendous popularity. We had a tremendous success. He indicted, raided my house. I mean, think of it. Think of it. Raided Mar-a-Lago. FBI agents raiding Mar-a-Lago. But think of it. He indicted a former president of the United States. Once that happened — thank you. I agree. No. <laughs> Thank you. But once that happened, it was like the gloves were off, because that's the worst thing. It's not even possible. Many presidents leave, and there are things you can go after. And frankly, to be honest, that's one of the reasons the Supreme Court is looking now at immunity. You have to have a guaranteed immunity for a president. Otherwise, a president's not going to be able to function. They're not going to move. Harry Truman would not have done — Harry Truman would not have done Hiroshima, Nagasaki probably ended the war, probably, I think so. But uh, he wouldn't have done it. So many things wouldn't be done. But think of it. Barack Obama shot missiles during his term, shot missiles into an area that killed a lot of people. They missed. I mean, does that mean you indict him when he gets out of office? Well, <laughs> she goes, it does. But, you know, you have to allow a president to do his job. They'll make decisions. And, you know, it's like the police. I say, we have to give the police back their power. We're not going to have any crime. But we, we protect what we do. I mean, to me, it's the best analogy. And the, our, our Democrat-run cities are, are dens of horrible crime right now. No, we've never seen anything like it. 
Washington, D.C. is — people are getting shot every single day. Washington, D.C. — we're going to, by the way, take over the capital of our country. We're going to fix it, clean it, and make it totally safe. We're going to bring it back. It's going to be better than it ever was before. But we're going to do that with our cities. But — but it's a little bit like the police. So you have a rogue cop. You know what a rogue cop is? Very seldom. But you have bad people. You have people, no matter where, no matter what. In the church, you have some people that aren't so good, right? But you have people — a road cop or a bad apple, whatever. And what they do is they make it so that you catch, so that it can't happen. And therefore, everyone else is allowed to commit crimes, murders, like, at levels that we've never seen before. No, we're going to have to do this immunity for the president. If you have a president that doesn't have immunity, he's never going to be free to do anything because the opposing party will always indict him as soon as he leaves the White House. And you can't let that happen. You can't. You take away all of the power of the presidency, it'll be a different country. So hopefully the decision will be a correct one, hopefully. Because you know what I find, and I just love to speak. Do you, you don't mind if I speak my mind, do you? I mean, you know, I figure I spend about 16 percent of my time on these suckers. And the rest of it, he goes, we don't — you don't need it, no? Thank God I don't. Isn't it nice to have a president that doesn't need it? It doesn't help him much because he can't read it. But I spend a small amount of time on those because it's, frankly, not as interesting. But the immunity situation is so important. And one thing I've noticed, and I've noticed it very strongly, if Biden or Obama, Democrat, appoint a judge, they go out of their way to hurt you. If a Republican appoints a judge like me, I appoint a judge, they go out of their way to show they're not biased and that they can't be bought, they can't be this, they can't be — you appoint somebody, and they go out of their way to rule against you because they want to show that they are not in any way influenced by the fact that you appointed them. And you really do have two standards. It's an incredible difference. And hopefully, the Republican justices that we have and judges that we have will make correct decisions. And what I want is just fair and correct decisions. And the president has to have immunity. If — if they don't have immunity, you're not going to have — you're not going to have a presidency much uh, — you're not going to have much of a country, frankly. It'll be a terrible thing. It'll be a disaster. Biden and his thugs are desperate to stop us because they know that we are the only ones that can stop them. We're the only ones. There's nobody else. The greatest movement of all time, okay? It's true. And you know what I believe? I believe it's over 90 percent. You ever see these guys? Well, Donald Trump has a pretty good lock on the party. He's got about 48 percent of the — that's not 48. MAGA is not 48. MAGA is like 95 percent of the party. I believe that. That's why I like the gentleman that I introduce you to, Lawrence, because Lawrence would be at a diner someplace, right? And the studio would be talking to the anchors, and they'd say, well, this one and that — I can't use the name Ron, so I'm not going to use Ron anymore, but let's use some of other candidates, right? Nikki Haley is doing really well, which is not true. She's doing really poorly. She's losing by a lot. But Nikki Haley is this and that, and another one is this and that. And then, all right, take it away, Lawrence. And Lawrence is going, you know, I know I'm, I'm hearing you what you're saying. But it's not like that out here. <laughs> and then it'll turn around. There'll be like 200 people having breakfast, and they'll say, who likes Trump? The place goes crazy. Who likes Haley? There's no, no sound. Who likes another person? I won't say it anymore. But there'll be no sound. So I thought it was cool. I actually thought it was cool. So having Lawrence was a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. There's a little, a little streetwise intelligence there, you know? It's so cool here. Hey, listen, what you're saying, it's just not working down here, I tell you. But, you know, that's what the truth is. That's why they are weaponizing law enforcement at a level like never before, and it's all high-level election interference. They're, they're interfering. Tomorrow, you know where I'm going to be? I don't have to be there, but I want to be there because otherwise I can't get a fair shake. I'm going to be in court. Democrat. It's okay. It's all right. 
So I go there tomorrow morning, leave early, or tonight, I think I'm leaving late. I'll leave late. Thank you, Eric. She said, I'm praying. I could use your prayers. Thank you. No, but look, it is what it is. These are crooked people. These are corrupt people. These are corrupt people. But I'm going for a trial tomorrow, all done by political opera. Reed Hoffman is sponsoring this woman that said terrible things from 30 years ago. He took me here. I owned three, four buildings around it. I owned the hotel next to it. I took her. A totally fabricated story. It's all fabricated. And the lawyer is a political operative. He used to be very close to Cuomo. Do you ever hear of Cuomo? And a political operative. Then you find out they fund it. And we had a special session on funding. And when the judge found out that it was true that they're funding it, he wouldn't let it as evidence. But that's OK. So I go there. I'll spend time there. And then I come back here. Who else would do this? I've been doing this now. And that's exactly. Now, here's the thing. Think of this. The day of your primary, right? The day of your primary. I have a case which is brought the day before Super Tuesday. Super Tuesday is a big deal. I have another case that's brought just before Iowa, just before Iowa. And it's a disgrace. I have like eight of them. Civil cases, all kinds of cases. We got every, there is no, there is, this is equal opportunity. We have every kind of case you can have. But think of it. They're filed. Now, I said, he's given them a lot of money. It's terrible. Giving her. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to let them rig the presidential election of 2024. We're not going to let it happen. They're going to try, too, by the way. They're going to try. That's all they're good at. That's the only thing they're good at is cheating. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I do, actually, because I'm being indicted for you. I'm being indicted for you. They're after. These people are crazy. Never forget our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. That's what it's all about. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me, which is actually true, hard to believe. They're after you. I just happen to be standing in the way, and I will always stand in the way. So we're delighted to have a few people tonight that I wanted to call out. Last night, we had states of people, and it was really something. What a special. Tomorrow night, we're doing a big, a big deal, too. And this is big, but we have some of your local people that have done such a great job. The chairman of the Rochester Regional Republican Committee, Carlton Cooper. Where's Carlton? Thank you, Carl. Looking good. Thank you, Carl. The vice chair of New Hampshire Republican Party, Ryan Terrell. Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. A man that's been with me right from the beginning, the early days, and boy, does he love the veterans, and we take care of our veterans. Lou Gargiulo. Where's Lou? Thank you, Lou. What a great job. Did I do the best job for the vets, please, Lou? You know, it's always dangerous, because if you said no, the whole evening is screwed, okay? But he won't say it. I have total confidence. We're doing a job, right? Thank you, Lou. Thank you. Thank you. We took care of the vets. You know, the vets, Lou will tell you, the vets would have to wait two, three, four months sometimes to see a doctor. And I came in, I said, the, if they can't see a doctor within 24 hours, they go outside and they get a private doctor, we pay the bill. And you know, it's interesting. We saved a lot of lives. People would become terminally ill as they waited. We saved a lot of lives, and that was good. And we, the other thing is we were able to fire almost 9,000 people from the VA. That, you know what? That doesn't sound good. We were able to fire people. You couldn't do it because of civil. I had to get these things through Congress, by the way. This wasn't just signing a, an executive order, right, Lou? But we had to fire. We fired 9,000, close to 9,000 people working at the VA who were sadists, who were thieves, who were horrible people who were beating up our veterans because it's not prime time for the veterans. They wouldn't have done it 30 years earlier. But these people are very sick. And the people that were doing this, we had a lot of sadists, a lot of bad people. You couldn't do a thing. We had a group of people that's, but I'm talking about real, real good unemployment rates. And 
for African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, veterans, young people, women, people with degrees from the great Wharton School of Finance. Did you ever hear of the Wharton School of Finance? From MIT, from the greatest schools, although MIT was hurt very badly, unfortunately, by this person running it. Did you see that, the three people? How good did Elise Stepanak do? Right? How about the head of Harvard? Do you think she was great? She was great. She was just great. No, Elise was fantastic. Elise has been here for four days. She's going around. She's, she's, she's amazing, right? Did you hear her speak? Yeah. She's great, isn't she? We had gas prices at $1.87 a gallon, and there was no inflation. We had no inflation. Together, we ended the NAFTA disaster, the worst trade deal ever made in the history of our country, and replaced it with a brand new and very successful USMCA, the best trade deal ever made. You know, that deal is so good that Mexico and Canada, who really took advantage of us for years, they want to renegotiate the deal. And I sent word to the administration. I do like to send word. Sometimes they'll ask me. I said, don't ever even think about renegotiating. We suffered with NAFTA for years, and now they want to renegotiate, which actually makes me feel quite good. I took on communist China like no administration in history, bringing in hundreds, think of it, hundreds of billions of dollars pouring into our treasury when no other president had gotten literally not 10 cents, not 10 cents. For years and years, they took advantage of us. In fact, they had a minor stock market crash last week. The poll came out. You know, whenever a poll comes out that's good for me, your stocks go up and other countries go down. Does that tell you something? They had a little, they had a little market crash last week. Oh, you know what it was? Uh, the night of Iowa, when those, when those incredible num best numbers in the history of the caucus, the best in the history, think of that, that's a long time. And China had a rough day. <laughs> Let's put that. Doesn't that tell you something, right? Doesn't Joe, right? And I gave $28 billion to the farmers and to the New England lobstermen and fishermen. We gave you a lot of money because they took advantage of you, but they don't with me. And I'll fight for the fishermen like never before with four more years. What they've done to the fishermen. Do you see where Biden wants to impose a fee on fishermen, $700 a day? I don't know much about fishing other than I want to take care of them, and I do. Nobody ever took care of them like I did. But $700 a fee, a daily fee of $700, that's a lot of fish, right? That's a hell of a lot of fish. I don't know how people can afford that. But that's what they have, $700 a day. It's a big deal going on right now. It's in the court system going on right now. These people, what they want to do, they, how they want to destroy our country. You know, I saw the other day, I saw the other day, people coming in legally through our system. They frisk them. They rip off their clothes. They check everything that you can check. They f and yet, if you walk over to the southern border, you can just walk into the country, right? The people that want to come into our country illegally, or citizens, when a citizen is coming back into the country, they go through hell. When you're a person that comes from Honduras or anywhere, and you want to come in illegally, you just walk right the hell into our country, right? They were showing the difference. A citizen gets rough. It's rough. Half of them think they'll never get back in. As soon as I get back in the White House, I will quickly end Joe Biden's inflation catastrophe. We will terminate the Green News scam. We will terminate the Green News scam. I don't call it the Green New Deal. I call it the Green News scam. How about this guy, Kerry? Finally, they got him the hell out. So China is building a coal plant every week, a massive coal plants. And Kerry goes over there to talk about how do we uh, work it so that the environment. So they said, well, we don't think you should build any more plants. We're I said, what about them? They don't have to do anything. You know, it's interesting with the environment. Nobody knows more about the environment than me. I know a lot. But you know, when those fumes go up from China, they blow right over our heads in three and a half days. When they dump their garbage in the oceans, the currents take them right into Los Angeles. Thank you. Five days. You ever see? We take away tons and tons of garbage. We clean up their garbage. It's amazing. You know, they want us to uh, be pollutant-free. And yet their crap flies over our country every single day. 
It's uh, we're really a bunch of babies. We're a bunch of babies. And what do you think about the mandate for the all electric cars? They don't go far. Well, you buy a, a little apartment someplace, and they put a new sink in, and the, no water comes out of the sink. They have called restrictors. You turn on the water, no water comes out. You want to wash your hands, no water. Let's drop, 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 because you're not allowed to do Even in areas that have so much water, they don't know what they're doing with it, right? In California, they send millions of gallons of water out into the Pacific before it reaches the farm belt, the farm area because they're trying to protect a tiny little fish that nobody ever heard of before. And then they want to put restrictions, if you live in Bel Air and pay a fortune, or Beverly Hills, that you can't use more than 27 gallons a day. Can you believe it? You have a house that's costing tens of millions of dollars, but you can't use your water. It's so crazy. And we have so much water. In fact, they have the canals that go right into Los Angeles, go right past the farms. And they turn it off. They have a massive valve. I was working with uh, Devin Nunes, who's great, former congressman. He's uh, great. He's in charge of Truth Social, which is hot. It's my voice. But I said, why are all these areas so barren? And then you have a little, tiny, beautiful little green spot right in the middle. They said, they don't give us any water. I said, but you must have a horrible drought. We don't have a drought. They, they have the water. You have to see this. They have the water millions of barrels of water, gallons of water, millions going into the Pacific Ocean before it gets to these areas. If they let it come down to the farms, and I was working with Gavin Newsom on that, and I was ready to get it, and then we got hit with the COVID thing, and we had other things to do. But there's so many things that we can do to make this country so much. Just the money that we're talking about. You know, that land is very fertile land, but it's got no water. They took it away. It comes down from Canada, comes down from the Pacific Northwest comes all the way down, all the way down. It's a beautiful thing to see. And then it goes, I say, what the hell happened? The water's, you got tons of water. And then you look a mile down the way and there's nothing, it's bone dry. All they have to do is turn that valve in the different direction. They don't want to do it. It's, uh, you know, the story. I mean, do they want to destroy our country? Is this what is going on? So we're going to be drilling and we're going to be doing all of those things and we'll quickly cut your, and I'm telling you, I'm giving you this as a pledge. Your, your energy prices will be, from, from the first day we take office, one year, your prices in New Hampshire will be one half. We have so much energy. One half. Now, who else could do that? And the fake news will say, he bribed the people of New Hampshire. Yeah. You know what I bribed you with? You know what I bribed you with? Common sense. That's what I bribed you. He bribed the people. No, your energy prices will be 50 percent. And that's not even hard to do. You do better than that. But you will have that done within one year. So whatever you're paying, mark it down because you're going to have it done within one year. Well, Biden is pushing the largest tax hike in American history. You know he's trying to do that. I will make the Trump tax cuts, which were the biggest in history, permanent. You know they expire in a year. And I'll make them permanent. There's a hidden cause of joint pain that won't show up on an x-ray. In fact, your doctor might even say your joint Now we have to we have to get a little help from these characters. And I'll once again cut a record number of job killing regulations. So in 4 years I cut more regulations. I went to the big businessmen we with a group of some of the biggest business, you know, running the big companies, the big public companies. I said, if you had your choice, would you rather have the tax cuts or would you rather have the regulation cuts? Every single one of them said the regulation cuts. They weren't able to do anything. They couldn't do anything. If they had land, they couldn't touch it. They couldn't do anything. They said there, every single one, there were probably 40 of them, 42, big meeting, and they all said the regulation cuts were actually more important than the tax cuts. But the tax cuts, a lot of the middle-income folks uh, would say the tax cuts would be more important. But Probably. That's why we had the great employment numbers. Before I arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, we have to win because we're not going to have a country of our own. I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled before I even take office. Got to be settled. It never would have happened. It, and even the Democrats admit that if Trump were president, that would have, Putin would have listened to me 100%. 
It was the apple of his eye. I got along with him very well. It was the apple of his eye, but it never would have happened. I told him, I said, Vladimir, don't do it, because here's what's going to happen. And he said, no way. I said, way, 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 way. But it wouldn't have happened. But it also wouldn't have happened for another reason. I had, I had a gallon, I mean, a barrel. We were at about 42, 43, 45. We actually had it down to 28, and these companies were going to go out of business. We had to lift it. We actually had to lift it. But we, uh, at $40, he didn't have the money to prosecute the war. At $100 a barrel, he had so much money, he made a fortune on that war. And this guy is the guy that lifted the price up. So he wants to make a deal to stop the war, but he's making it impossible because Putin's making an absolute fortune. Because he never, there's so little, these are not chess players. These are, these aren't, they're not checker players either. These are horrible, horrible negotiators. Or there's something else going on that we just don't know about. There's something going on. Like when you look, I don't know if you saw it, did you see that China is paying the Penn Center hundreds of millions of dollars? The Biden Penn Center. Biden, Biden couldn't, couldn't get into Penn. No, he's got the Penn Center. Did you see it came out today? The fake news can tell you about it. The, they pay him like a hundred and some odd million dollars. They paid over a hundred million dollars. And they pay Biden a lot of money to be the chairman, but he hasn't been there forever. The whole thing, this country is so corrupt. And then they try with Hunter, and oh, they try and act like, oh, it's, well, no, I want, I want $500,000 a painting. You know, it's interesting. They call me, they want me to do a painting for the White House. You know, you have these beautiful paintings of presidents, and they want me to do a painting. And it's sort of the last thing on my mind. I want to, we got to take it back and save our country. But you, I meet with these artists, and they give you like 25 artists, and you meet with them a little bit, and they're unbelievably talented people. And they get a hell of a lot less than 500,000. I could make a deal for peanuts. And they're really talented people. You know, they're on a list of great artists because they want certain people doing it. So why not? And uh, Biden gets $500,000 a painting. And I guess the one guy bought a lot of them, right? He bought a lot of them. He was buying the place out. Uh, could you imagine if Don Jr. got 500000 a painting that he didn't spend? And it's all modern, you know, because modern, you take a can of paint, throw it, take a few of <laughs> throw it. Then you say, 500000 you could do one of those paintings in about 12 seconds. You have five cans, boom, 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 done, next. Give me 500000 No, it's so corrupt. It's, you know, when that came out, I said, there's one they won't get away with. They got away with it. I guess. I don't know. Did they get away with it? I don't know. Maybe not. We will restore peace through strength. That's what we did. We had no wars. We had no wars. And I'm the only candidate who can make this promise to you that I will prevent World War III. I know them all. We're not going to have World War III. And we are so close to World War III, you have no idea. When I looked at those bombs a few days ago starting to drop all over the Middle East, I say, Middle East, here we come again. I got you out and got rid of ISIS. We'll build an iron dome over our country, the state-of-the-art missile defense shield, and it's all made in the USA. You know, we have them for Israel. We have them from a — we don't have them for ourselves. I think it's time that we have one. Does that make sense? And you know what? It's all great jobs. We're going to make it here. But we're going to have an Iron Dome so that if somebody decides to take some shots, this stuff is really effective. You know, Ronald Reagan wanted to do it. I think he called it Star Wars. Star Wars. The problem was there was no technology. It was a great idea. But the, today we have unbelievable technology. I saw it. I saw missiles going into Saudi Arabia, and I saw soldiers with extremely high IQs, okay? Not strong physically, but strong mentally. And they go, missile, missile, missile. And they very calmly walk to a desk. Ding, 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 ding. They see the, the things traveling like 2,500 miles an hour. And they're like cool as a cucumber. Bing, bing, bing. Missile launch, missile launch. Bing, boom. <laughs> it's the most unbelievable thing. But we don't have it here. We don't have it there. Many times we're, I will tell you, Saudi Arabia saved Saudi Arabia a lot where missiles were shot from Yemen, from other places, too. And uh, these guys were unbelievable. They have, they have, actually, uh, have actually tapes of it in action. And they're cool as a cucumber. You know, you have, like, 
I think, 17 seconds to get this thing off, right? You don't have a lot of time. The thing's moving pretty quick. And they just sit back, and it's like uh, taking candy from a baby. It's a genius. It's incredible. We have the technology now. We're going to use it for ourselves. I will also defend our great veterans, as nobody else has ever defended them. And I will ask Congress to build the full-service VA hospital that New Hampshire veterans so dearly deserve. You're the only state that doesn't have a VA hospital full service. Do you know you're the only state that doesn't have — what happened there, Al? They don't have it. What the hell's going on? They're the only state that don't — okay. They're the only state that don't — you don't have a full service VA hospital. We're going to build one, okay? We're going to build it. I will direct a completely overhaul DOJ to investigate every radical, out-of-control prosecutor in America for their illegal, racist, and reverse enforcement of the law. The prosecutors are out of control, especially if you happen to be a Republican. Uh, they are out of control. It's become such a corrupt system. I'm also going to indemnify all police officers and law enforcement officials throughout the United States to protect them from being destroyed by the radical left for taking strong action against crime. If you stop somebody from robbing a store, they want to destroy your life. Why were you so tough? Why were you so bad? You ever see anything where they walk out of the stores with televisions and everything? I mean, I never said and, and the police are told, don't do anything, because they get sued. We're going to indemnify all police officers and some precincts, depending on where they are. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than ever before. Our cities are falling apart. They're all Democrat-run. They're falling apart, and they are so crime-ridden. You can't walk down the street without getting shot. That includes our capital, by the way, our United States capital. People can't go there anymore. It's so dangerous. You walk across the street to a park, which is, by the way, loaded up with tents, homeless tents. You know, I stopped that. When I was president, if I saw two or three tents forming, I said, immediately remove them. But then when you have a 1,000 tents, it's a much tougher thing to do. But it was in relatively good shape. It was in very good shape. But, you know, you need new roads. You need new medians. They have the medians falling down. You know, that metal garbage that they sell, right, like this? It looks like they put it in the next day. I don't know. The sun heats it up, and it just disintegrates. It is the worst crap. Whoever made that stuff got away with a lot of bad — a lot of money. But they have them all over the place. But they're falling apart. They always fall apart. They're laying down. But these are very old, and they're half laying on the road. And you're driving into the White House, or you're driving in wherever you have a meeting. You know where I was going? To court, because it was a Biden court. I call it a Biden court. I was going in to defend myself against this crooked president that we have. So I'm going into a court in Washington, D.C., where I can't get a fair trial, by the way, but that's all right. It'll work out, because things work out, you know? Things work out. But look, so they said, sir, I hope you don't get a certain judge, because it would be impossible to win. I got that judge. I wonder how that happened. There's many, many judges. They said, well, the one you just can't get, it's so unfair, is this one. I got that judge. But don't worry about me. I'm taking care of you. Don't worry. But I was driving in, and you're driving over garbage. I mean, literally, there's a street that mean. Can you imagine you're from a country? You're the head of, you're the prime minister, you're the president, you're the, of some beautiful country, terrible country, and you're driving in over garbage. There's cartons of paper. There's beer cans all over the road. And they've been there for a long time. They, you know, you can tell. They've been there for a long time. It's so sad to see. That's our capital. You can't walk across the street. You can't walk outside. Three people were shot last week. They're being shot all the time and dying in many cases. They come in from Nebraska. They come in from nice, beautiful places like your great state. They come into the capital. They come in from New Hampshire, and they come and they go, and they want to see our great Washington, D.C., and they, they go away saying, wow, if they go away at all. But it's very dangerous because people are getting shot all the time. And I want the federal government to take over our capital, run it properly, and be very strong on crime, rebuild it, and get rid of the slum areas. We're going to get rid of the slum areas. 
or make them parks or something. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the lives of our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And I always say, and I always say that I can't believe I have to say this, but I have to say this. You would not, 10 years ago, 15 years, this would be not even thinkable. And I will keep men out of women's sports. Can you believe it? And the new thing, I don't know if you heard, I heard it yesterday where they want women to be able to fight men. In other words, like in UFC or boxing, they want women to fight. And, uh, you know, they know that. They, by the way, they know how that works out because in gyms, you know, they're all practicing, working out together. They know that doesn't work out too well. But can you imagine they want women to fight men? This is sick. It's just crazy what's going on. The weightlifting is something to behold. A record that stood for 18 years gets broken by 157 pounds. They put in a quarter of an ounce and a quarter of an ounce, and the women can't do it. 18, I can't do it. They put in 150 pounds, and the guy lifts it like it's nothing. The whole thing is crazy. It's crazy. And, and you know, and there are people, I sort of think they're serious about it. I don't understand. I, don't, I think, you know, you always like to understand where the other side's coming from. But a lot of this stuff is not understandable. Again, we're the party of common sense. I will fully uphold the Second Amendment. I will never allow the creation of a central bank digital currency where they can rob your money. We will protect innocent life, and we will restore free speech, which we don't have now. And I will secure our elections. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots and voter ID. But until then, Republicans must win. We have to win on Tuesday. We have to win, and we have to win by a big, resounding number. It's got to be a big, big, beautiful number. You know, Vivek just came with us. And now Ron just came with us. They're all coming with us. They're all coming. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history, and by the way, Senator Tim Scott, what a good guy. He came with us from the same state, South Carolina, as Nikki. They had her, what do you think, Senator Scott? You know, she appointed him, and he went with me. I said, why? I said, she must be bad. She must be bad. No, that was a beautiful, that was a beautiful endorsement two nights ago. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as crooked Joe Biden and the Biden administration have done. There's nobody ever has done damage to our country like this. So if you want to save America, then this Tuesday, January 23rd, day after tomorrow, very simple, you must vote for Trump. have to vote for Trump. So in conclusion, and it's been great to be with with you. Really good. You're great people. You built this country. You really did. You really did. I said it too. Iowa, you built this country. So many great states, great people, the great states. From Manchester to Meredith, from Plymouth to Portsmouth, from Raymond to Rochester, you inherit the legacy of red-blooded New Hampshire patriots who lived by the very simple but immortal motto, live free or die, right? Have you heard of it? Have you heard of it? We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the oceans, Settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, raised up those great skyscrapers, won two world wars. You know, we won world wars out of forts. Fort Benning, Fort this, Fort that, many forts. 
They changed the name. We won wars out of these forts. They changed the name. They changed the name of the forts. A lot of people aren't too happy about that. Defeated, he said, unacceptable, yeah. No, they changed the name of a lot of our forts. We won two world wars out of a lot of these forts, and they changed the name. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. Defeated fascism and communism and made America the single greatest nation in the history of the world. You did it. But now we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has lost its confidence, its willpower, and it's lost its strength. We are a nation that has quite simply lost its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. And it will happen fast. It was hardworking patriots like you who built this country. And it is hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. We will fight for America like no one has ever fought before. 2024 is our final battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers. We will expel them, people that want to go and have wars all the time. Nikki's one of them. She's one of them. Let's kill people all over the place, and let's make a lot of money for those people that make the missiles. We don't even have, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I saw where they said we're very low on ammunition. Number one, that should because we're giving it all away, right, to people, to people, to countries. We're giving it away. We're low on ammunition. If that were true, you don't say it. You know, there's some... Can you imagine President Xi of China, Putin of Russia, saying, they just announced they're low on ammunition. That's not the kind of thing you want to say, and it's very stupid to be in that position anyway. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists, and fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that truly hates our country. We will rout the fake news media. We will evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House. On Election Day 2024, we will evict this crooked, terrible president from the White House. The great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, the forgotten man and woman will be forgotten no longer. Four years you had it. You were not forgotten. Just three years ago, for four years, you were not forgotten. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, New Hampshire. Go out and vote. God